Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our first Sambang Gabi devotion series. And uh, I'm glad that you're able to join us tonight. And I hope that you're looking forward to this wonderful series. Every night, someone will come and bring uh, the message of God's Word uh, relating to Christmas. And this will be every night until the 24th of uh, December. On the 24th, we will have a special candlelight service at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. The way that we normally do it every year, but this year it will be online. And not 3 p.m., but 5 p.m. So I'm looking forward, you know, I'm so excited to this uh, Sambangabi devotions. Let's come before the Lord and let's just pray uh, before we begin. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful evening. We thank you, Lord, for this day that has just passed. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for the strength you've given us, that you have brought us to this evening time of the day to be able to listen and hear your word. Lord, may you speak to our hearts. May you reveal your truth to us. And uh, may you be exalted and glorified in the study of our word. We thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful privilege to study your word together. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Tonight, I am going to bring to you uh, the first topic of our Sambang Gabi devotions from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. This is a very familiar passage. In fact, we often quote this passage every Christmas time. So if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. It says here, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The title I want to give to this uh, message tonight is, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Taken from the passage itself. You know, it seems often in all the festivities and traditions that take place on every Christmas time during Christmas, we can so easily neglect the main cause of the celebration. We can forget what it is that we are celebrating. So what is it that we really celebrate every Christmas? For me, Christmas is about God coming to be with us, to become a man, to be with us, in order to make for a way for us to be with Him um, for eternity. So God came to be with us in order to make a way for us to be with Him for, for all eternity. Uh, I want to I wanna speak to you from verse 6. You know, that is quite a long passage in itself, and there's so many points in that passage that I want to talk about. But the first thing he says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. It seems like he's repeating the, the, the line two times. First he says child, then he says son. So what is Isaiah prophesying when he says this, To us a child is born? Well, this is not happening at that time. This is a prophecy that would take place uh, hundreds of years later. But it's talking about the prophecy of Jesus Christ being born, the Messiah being born. And here in this first line, we see the humanity of Jesus Christ, that Jesus became a man for us. To us, a child is born. Uh, you know, the birth of a child in this world is always celebrated. Um, if the child belongs to a, a family that loves and cares for that child, the parents almost always will rejoice in that. Um, maybe 
not always there is a grand celebration or a grand party at the birth of a child, but the parents always um, bring the news to family members and friends with great joy. Isn't that true? I remember when I first became a father, I sent a text to all my family and, and my, my close friends and told them, you know, that uh, we have a boy and it's a healthy boy. Because at that time when, we, when, we ha- when, when my wife had her first pregnancy, we decided not to know the gender so that it will be a surprise. So I did not know until the time that the baby came out that it will be a boy or a girl. So when the baby came out and you know, the doctor said, you have a healthy boy, I, I rejoiced greatly in that. And I sent texts to all my friends and family, um, letting them know that I have a son. Births are usually announced after a child is born, right? We don't announce a birth before the child is born. And the announcement usually carries the joy of the bearer of that news. So um, the announcement is made usually by the parents and they are rejoicing in that announcement. As they bring that news, they bring it with great joy. But here, in this passage, it is an announcement of a birth that is to happen. It's a birth of a child foretold who would be born for us. And in in this announcement, it carries within it the joy that ought to come to the receiver. It is not an announcement where the bearer is the one bringing, uh, you know, saying it with great joy, but it is supposed to be received with great joy because this child is the Messiah, our Savior. You know, Jesus, on the night that He was born to Mary and Joseph, and they were in the manger, we all know the Christmas story, Jesus wasn't born just to that young couple, to Joseph and Mary. Neither was He born to the Jews, Jesus was born for all people, for all of mankind. This passage in Isaiah, for to us a child is born. He was born for you. He was born for me. God was born as a baby and became and lived as a man in order that he might save us. Jesus was born so that he could die for us. So in that first line, we see the humanity of Jesus Christ. And then in the second line, it says, and the government will be on his shoulders. When we speak of government, uh, what comes to mind? The law, right? The government is there to uphold the law. And um, it says that the government will be on his shoulders. So here in this second line, we see the justice of Jesus Christ. You know, in Jeremiah 23, verse 5 and 6, it says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And this word righteous branch is capitalized, capital R and capital B, uh, speaking about the Messiah, the king who would rule on earth. It says, A king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved. And Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord, our righteous Savior. It's speaking, of course, of Jesus Christ. And that day is going to come when Jesus will rule and and reign here on earth. Uh, When he comes again, he will rule and reign here on earth as king. Uh, The government, maybe Isaiah was speaking of that time, the government will be on his shoulders. So we know that the kingdom of Jesus will be a kingdom of righteousness and justice, very much unlike the kingdoms of the world today. You see, in the world today, the justice systems are bought. There is injustice all over the world. Um, people can get away with their, with their crime, you know. But here's one thing I want you to understand about the government of Jesus Christ. The burden of the law will be upon him. The burden of the law will be upon him. 
For in our failure, He will give us His righteousness. It's, it's a different kind of justice system where God Himself takes upon Himself the punishment so that He could give us His righteousness. This is probably what Isaiah means when he says the government will be on His shoulders. He takes upon Himself the entire burden of the law. Even when Jesus came, He said, you know, I have not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it. Right? To do it for our sakes. Then the third part, it's a bit long. There are four things mentioned there. He says, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And this third part, I believe, is talking about the grace that God will bring for us. Right? That he will become our Counselor. He will be our mighty God. He will be our everlasting Father and our Prince of Peace. All because of the grace of God. None of this we deserve. It's all an act of His grace. You know, I want to speak about each of these four things very briefly. And uh, when we say that He will be a wonderful counselor, you know, many times in our life we experience, experience trouble and hardships and difficulties, and we are in need of sound advice. And there are people that we have in mind that we can run to who could give us sound advice and counsel us. But Jesus is the most wonderful counselor. I want to tell you that. Um, there is, there is a, a word that He can give to us that we cannot find in other people in the world. You know, there's the story of the woman, the, Samarit, the, the woman at the well, right? Jesus answered in John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Uh, when he asked for, for water and then, you know, uh, this woman was um, going to give him water. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, okay? But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. And Jesus was talking to this woman. You know, this woman had a, a broken life. She had been married five times, failed five failed marriages, and the man that she was with now was not even her husband. And uh, here, Jesus was able to turn this woman's life around. An encounter with Jesus, you know, turned her life all around. And Jesus is that wonderful counselor. That when we come to Him in our brokenness, in our troubles, He can give us a word that can turn our life around. That's why He is a, such a wonderful counselor. We also know Him as a mighty God, someone who can do anything for us, but not always in the way that we want Him to respond. When we speak of God being mighty, it's also that he's able to accomplish what he wants. Uh, when, when Israel was, was uh, acting in wickedness, in rebellion, you know, he reminds Jeremiah and says, you see this uh, clay pot, you know, just as I made it, I can break it, I can destroy it and rework it once more. In Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, he says to Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? And this was a time when, when God was telling Jeremiah that, you know, he has raised up the Babylonians to, to conquer them and destroy them. But you know what? Uh, I want to read to you a passage from, from uh, chapter 32. In the later part, he says, in verse 36, Jeremiah 32, verse 36, he says, You are saying about this city, by the sword, famine, and plague, it will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them in my furious anger and great wrath. 
I will bring them back to this place and let them live in safety. You know, we see here two aspects of God's mighty power. That just as God is powerful to bring uh, destruction and discipline to these rebellious people, He is also powerful to restore them. He is a mighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. He is also an everlasting Father. You know, He is a Father to us. Everlasting, an eternal Father. When we, when we think about our fathers, we think about, you know, compassion and love towards us. You know, in Matthew chapter 6, talks about not worrying, right? And then Jesus tells the disciples, He says, look at the birds of the air. You know, for those of us who worry, this is something that you might want to consider doing when you're in your home. Maybe if you have a balcony, you can look out the window and be reminded of this verse. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, it says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Here's a picture of God's love and compassion for His people as a father has compassion, as a father takes compassion on his children. He is one who takes care of us with grace and compassion. He is our everlasting father. And then another verse I want to bring to you is John chapter 14, verse 27, where Jesus himself says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So Jesus promises to give us His peace, and only He can do that because He is the Prince of Peace. Um, when we are in Christ, there's something so amazing that takes place. You see, even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of suffering, when everything that is happening around us is supposed to steal our peace, we can have peace if we are in Christ. It is something that He promises His children. You know, and that is a grace that He gives to us. When Isaiah says, For to us it's a child is born, a son is given, the government will be on His shoulders. He will be a mighty God, a wonderful counselor, an everlasting father, and the prince of peace. You know, that is His grace towards us. He's able to keep us calm and courageous, even in the midst of calamity. You know, we have faced a lot of calamities this year. And, you know, with this pandemic still ongoing, there's, there's still so much uh, uncertainty all around us. And, you know, in this world, we will always have that kind of trouble and uncertainty and hardship. But in Christ, we will always have peace. He is our Prince of Peace. Amen. So as we close this uh, devotion tonight, this uh, first Sambangabi devotion, allow me to bring to you this closing reflection. So I mentioned about um, the humanity of Jesus. I mentioned about the justice of Jesus or the justice of God, the humanity of God and the grace of God. And really, Christmas can be encapsulated in this statement. God sent His Son to become a man like us so that by His death, He could exer exercise His justice on mankind and lavish us with His grace. Let me repeat that statement. God sent His Son to become a man like us so that by His death, he could exercise His justice on mankind and lavish us with His grace. That is, you know, the essence of Christmas. God became a man so that He can exercise justice and grant us His grace. We are in the period of grace now. God is calling all people back to Him. You see, when He returns, there won't be a chance to return to Him anymore. When He returns, when the day of judgment comes, that will be too late. 
Okay? We are in the period of grace right now, a grace period where we can enter and belong to His family. That is Christmas. That is what we are celebrating. We rejoice in God coming into this world and becoming a man to take our place. Let's come before the Lord and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done. We thank you, Lord, for what Christmas represents. It's not about anything else. It's only about you. You becoming a man, giving yourself, yourself up for us, exercising your justice on this world by dying on the cross for us and lavishing us with your grace with your love, your mercy. Lord, we are truly grateful. In fact, there is no other way to respond but to thank you with all of our hearts, to celebrate you, to rejoice in your name. And that's what we want to do this Christmas time. We want to celebrate you in our lives. We want our hearts to be filled with thanksgiving each day. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you have done in us and in our families. And we thank you, Lord, for the work that you continue to do in the lives of those people that we are reaching out to. Those, those people that have yet to know you. We're thankful because we know that you are a God who cares, a God who loves them. Lord, Thank you so much, Lord. Be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Sambang Gabi devotions. Don't forget, tomorrow we will have another uh, Sambang Gabi devotion, but it will take place in the TNW service at 6.30 p.m. The rest of the evenings, it will be at 9.30 p.m. as well. Uh, every night until the uh, 24th, sorry, until the 23rd and then on the 24th, we will have our uh, candlelight service together. On Sunday, December 20, we will not have a Sambang Gabi devotion because it's our uh, day of worship and we have all our Sunday services. So once again, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.